Winding down. Here we are. The November town board meeting for the town of Phillipstown. Hello, Robert. How are you? We, I see we have a Phillipstown Depot Theater Development Corporation special meeting. It's a mouthful. Marzolo and Steve Ives are the members of the corporation, which are like the stockholders of a for-profit corporation. And in so doing, the things like the bylaws have to be adopted by you. And in this case, we want to amend the bylaws because in connection with the proposed merger, which we're hoping will go through pretty soon, to a regular not-for-profit corporation instead of this local development corporation, um, it, the, the, the bylaws of the present corporation will survive because they provide for this governance system, whereas the bylaws of the new corporation, for the time being, don't. And therefore, I want to amend the, the uh, we want to amend the bylaws of the old corporation to contain a new conflict of interest policy, which now the IRS requires of all not-for-profits. It's uh, much more detailed than the one we already had, and it basically says you can't uh, have, a, have an interest in matters that the corporation has an interest in. <clears throat> but in order to do that, we have to have you approve it. The board of directors of the corporation did approve it and recommended it, <coughs> recommended that the members adopt it, adopt the, the new bylaws, or the, the amendment to the bylaws, sorry. So the, uh, the meeting is uh, in progress, I guess. You have called it to order. There is a quorum present. And I propose a resolution resolved that the bylaws are amended as follows. A, Article 7, Conflict of Interest is amended to read in its entirety as follows. The corporation's conflict of interest policy is set forth in Appendix A. And B, Appendix A, Conflict of Interest policy is added at the end of the bylaws. And we need a vote on that. If somebody would. So oh, any questions, out. of course? No, no questions. So we get a motion on the resolution? I'll so move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I vote aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Really, the meeting is adjourned, I guess. Thank, okay. you. thank you very much. Bob, I just want to thank you for all your work. Bob, yes. Bob does endless amounts of work for the Depot <laughs> Theater and for the Friends of Phillipstown Rec, and your council um, takes a lot of time and energy, and we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I Thank you. Do. Enjoy, We've got a lot of good it. things <laughs> established because of your counsel. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Bob. Bye-bye. Okay. Approval of minutes. Monthly town board meeting, October 2nd, 2014. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Weekly town board meeting, October 8th, 2014. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Any opposed? Motion yeah. carries. Weekly town board meeting October 15, 2014. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Bid opening October 29, 2014. Sale of the VFW. I was not here. No bids were received. So. Do we have to do anything with this? It's on the agenda. Oh. What? This is for the sale of the Dahlia House. Wow. That's, that that's a scoop. Well, we're not going to move on. Anyway. Something changed. Yeah. Just a typo. Right. Yeah. All right. I'll They're moving it. in the Dahlia House next week, though. <laughs> <laughs> Moving in. You're moving in? Yeah, Richard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm in a little prematurely. <laughs> um, so we don't have to, there's no bids received, so there's nothing really to vote on, right? We well, you should because we're going to put it in the minute book, and that's a permanent record. Oh, okay. So we had a bid opening, no bids received. Can I get a motion on the uh, acknowledgement of no bids received? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. Any opposed? I vote aye. Committee reports. Conservation Board. Okay, the Conservation Board met on October 14th. Uh, three applications. 
Uh, first one was up was uh, for a three and a quarter acre property. This is the Brenner application, 530 East Mountain South, tax map 17-2-52. This is for an installation of septic fill pad, septic system, underground service line for utilities, and underwater supply well. Basically, this is a, con a construction of a four bedroom single family house. Um, the concerns here were basically, um, was in fact any of the uh, septic systems and wells um, going to interfere or, or play interplay with the wetlands buffer, which is 100 feet from any waterway or actual wetlands. Um, the Board of Health um, was, was asked to take a look at it and supply the report back to the CB, um, <coughs> stating that there, wasn't, there would be no interference um, with that. Um, so that, that was a big piece of that there. A uh, small portion of the driveway uh, will be part of the buffer that was looked into, um, also with uh, potential mitigation and so forth as far as the construction goes. Uh, construction survey was provided and uh, the board felt that the, between the Board of Health's approval and also with the mitigation plan that uh, in fact uh, the work would be approved. Second application dealt with Turner application. This is a 33 acre parcel, four circle drive. This is located off of Lane Gate, uh, tax map 49-3-20. This is in regards to uh, looking for uh, restoring a view shed capability, viewing ability. Um, so this involved tree work, um, but it also involved with restoration of the wetlands as well. So it involved uh, invasive species removal. Um, there would be, in order to do that, of course, you'd have to use certain uh, herbicides and dyes, um, and so that was discussed and so forth, what would be used, how and so forth, uh, with the wetlands inspector and the board to make sure that that would, um, of course, be taken care of properly. And then also, of course, while you're removing items, you also have to be very careful about stormwater runoff during that time in between that and planting, so that uh, was also discussed as far as um, the ability to make sure that that wouldn't be a problem. Um, with that discussed and so forth, um, they went ahead and, and issued the wetlands permit. Third application is a six-acre six um, applicant. Uh, uh, this is the banker application. This has come up before. This is a continuing one. It's uh, 43 Kings Dock Road. Um, this sits below 9D along the Hudson River by the railroad tracks. Um, they have, this has been discussed before. This is an ongoing uh, mitigation, there's been discussions in the past with the board in regards to mitigations that were done there because there's a lot of wetlands in the, in the lower area. Um, in this particular case, um, the applicant discussed actual construction now uh, beyond the mitigation situations. And this, there is actually two cottages down there, um, close to, actually close to the river. Um, one of them, which is a little further inland, they want to actually um, renovate that but keep it as a two bedroom. Um, the existing cottage, which is the closest to the river, um, they want to actually uh, take down uh, and they want to rebuild a, a new building that would not be a full-time dwelling but would be used for bathroom and, and uh, support building, basically. Um, it would be slightly changed a little bit in direction in order to uh, be able to see the river and the views a, a little bit better. The concerns there for um, the Conservation Board is it's right on top of a lot of wet, uh, sensitive wetlands and it's right on top of the steep slopes. Uh, these, are, these two buildings are really grandfathered. They, they would really pass today, so there, there's a lot of discussions and so forth on how to actually handle this. Um, they also um, want to rehab the septic, but because there were two, <coughs> two bedroom uh, buildings and they're only going to go to a one two bedroom, they're obviously going to downsize the need and uh, the determination was made that they could in fact just use the existing septic. Um, they also uh, want to redo a brick stone wall there uh, which sits above the actual wetland so naturally that would be of concern. And of course remediation, sill fencing which goes around in order to protect uh, during construction was discussed as well. Um, so that's an ongoing issue and that's going to follow up in the next meeting. Um, the next meeting for the Conservation Board will be November 18th, not next Tuesday because of the holiday. Um, they also discussed uh, some stormwater management issues, um, and they would have, we would have presented some issues. Uh, we had a recent incident where some land was cut down, uh, and uh, there wasn't really a lot of thinking about the surrounding and how it could affect the wetlands nearby and steep slopes. So that would be an example of make sure you're not just concentrating on your own property, but you're looking around you as to what you could affect. Um, 
because we have our budget meeting, our November 20th meeting uh, will be delayed, um, but we will reschedule that and have that as well. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Recreation. Um, we were not available, Nancy or I, for the recreation meeting. We were at a budget workshop, but Amber has sent some notes up to me. Um, winter registration opened on October 27th. The holiday senior luncheon is on November 19th. Phillipstown Park will be closed for the season on November 30th. The Winter Carnival Committee has started working on the 2015 event. It is set for February 7th. The committee is working with the Chamber of Commerce to also help promote business during the winter. In addition, the committee will be working with local artists to create snowflake murals around town. Sponsors can display a snowflake for a period of time before they are auctioned off at the event. The Recreation Commission will look to form a field committee after the new year to develop a plan to rehab the town fields. Joel Coney Bear was elected the new chairman of the Recreation Commission. The next meeting will be on December 9th at 7.30. Thank you. Recycling. Nothing new on the recycling front. Um, I did get a call from a resident who would like to come to a meeting to discuss composting and uh, disposal of land uh, refuse. So he will probably make a request. I don't know if you've gotten anything for someone to be on the agenda next month to discuss that. So yeah, something that keeps had coming a long, up. So long I conversation with him about oh, okay. it. Okay, so it keeps coming up with different residents. I think it's time that. We take a look at it. Right. Good. Thanks. Planning board. Okay. Uh, the meeting was held on the 16th. Um, first application was RDR Equities, uh, site plan application, 1510 Route 9 Garrison. Kim, was that the car wash? This was uh, the car wash project, if anyone remembers that. Um, it's a withdrawal of the application a request for return of escrow. Board accepted the withdrawal and passed vote to return the escrow. Uh, second was the Hudson Highlands Reserve. Uh, this is a conservation uh, subdivision, East Mountain Road North and Horton Road. Um, this is, uh, was the uh, mining property previously owned by the Lineses, um, combined with two or maybe three other parcels now. Um, there was a, a request to withdraw application and return of escrow account, which was voted on and granted. Uh, this group has renamed itself, and ha I believe, and have submitted a new application, which uh, was presented later in the meeting, and I will get to that shortly. Um, third application was GEX. Uh, it's a realignment property, uh, 24 Hummingbird Lane. Um, if this sounds familiar, it's been going on forever, um, and there have been uh, quite a few extensions granted. Um, they did vote and uh, granted an extension. Uh, fourth application was a public hear or well, it wasn't an application, was a public hearing um, regarding the ESP subdivision site at 3330 Route 9 in Cold Spring. Uh, there was discussion and then the hearing was open to the public. It uh, seemed like there was no love lost between the owners of the property. Um, as most of their neighbors were present and spoke of their negative experiences dealing with them, everything from cutting trees not on ESP property to blocking access to their homes with junk vehicles. Uh, the hearing was closed after a lengthy input from neighbors, but after more discussion between board members, it was determined that there were a number of concerns regarding the application, and so they rescinded the vote to close the public hearing, uh, which I believe will be continued at the next month's meeting. Uh, fifth application uh, was Horton Road, LLC. Um, this was the one I spoke of before, the Hudson Highlands Reserve, same people. Um, they submitted a new application for the property under a conservation subdivision. Um, the property is three large tracks, including the Lines Mine uh, lot, uh, totaling approximately 165 acres and stretching from East Mountain North to Horton Road and Cold Spring. Uh, this will be the first application of its kind since the new zoning. It permits cluster housing on large tracts of land if the planning board agrees that the land saved from developing the entire parcel is of significant importance. Uh, the plan submitted is for 28 lots of one and a half acres each. Um, the houses would be 3,500 square foot uh, each. There's also an equestrian center, riding academy, and horse farm on the northern portion of the land. The main entrance will be off Route 9, but there will be service roads off of East Mountain Road North and Horton Road. Uh, the board declared this a major project and themselves as lead agency. 
Uh, there will be a site visit this Sunday at 9.30. Uh, last item on the agenda was a submission of site plan application 201 Old Stone Road Garrison. Uh, this property is just east of Route 9D off of Route 403. This was a revised EAF, EAF Part 2 in response to Town, Ron, Town Engineer Ron Gaynor's concerns. The revised EAF was adopted by the board. This is an existing residence that will be renovated and, and include additions. It is a very difficult piece of property because of significant steep slopes, groundwater, <coughs> and concerns of view shed. After the discussion, the board voted and agreed with their attorney, Steve Gabba's assessment of the property conditions and his recommendation to issue a special permit. Next meeting is November 20th at Butterfield Library. Thanks, Dave. Zoning. I attended the October 20th meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. There were two items on the agenda. There was a review for completeness of an application for William Stellmacher, 72 Steuben Road in Garrison, appeal number 887. The applicant is seeking a seven-foot variance for an existing shed that was built in 1972. This application was deemed incomplete um, and deferred to the next month's meeting. The second item was appeal 886, Joseph Estvanik, 125 Old Albany Post Road, also in Garrison. The applicant is seeking a five-foot variance for a side yard setback for a deck. This application was also found incomplete and scheduled for review on a public hearing, review and a public hearing if it is complete at the November 10th meeting of the ZBA, which will be the next meeting. That's it? That's all you got? That's it. All right. Thank you. Highway. Phillipstown Town Board members from Roger M. Cherico. Work performed by the Phillipstown Highway Department for the month of October. Approximately 2,000 feet was paved on East Mountain Road South on October 27th. On October 9th, the Gorman Group was contracted to resurface both Arden and Ferris Drive using paver-placed surface treatment, a material substitute for blacktop, which is less expensive. Stantec Consultant Services is working on producing a survey and base map for the Manitou Station Road project, which involves the road that leads out to Hudson River Lane. As soon as this is complete, we will approach the board for approval to move forward for the financing of the project design. Approximately 1,200 feet of drainage will be installed on the west end of South Mountain Pass off of Route 9D. This will help prevent some of the washouts that the road experiences. The town has received a multimodal agreement with the state that will fund part of the project. Preliminary drawings are complete and we are preparing to put it out to bid. The hydrology study has been completed for the Indian Brook Road culvert replacement project. The engineer and I are reviewing it and we'll turn it over to FEMA. FEMA requested this study to be performed before they will agree the f with funding the project. We will con continue to repair potholes on both the blacktop and dirt roads, weather permitting. The department will be closed for Election Day and Veterans Day. Along with the other routine maintenance of town roads, we are picking up leaves. Leaves interfere with the grading of dirt roads and must be picked up before these roads are graded. We are asking residents to follow the town code and do not blow leaves onto the town roads. Not only can leaves cause hazardous situation for motorists, it also ca causes problems for drainage. This time of year, the shop is very busy, starting maintenance on the plows and sanders for our snow removal season. $5,659 in vehicle maintenance was spent for the month of September. Above, submitted by Roger M. Cherico, Highway Superintendent. All right, thank you. John, what is the uh, surface they did on Ferris? Uh, what did he say that one? For a resurface? Using, Using paver placed surface treatment. I have no idea. You have to find out. You know what that is? No. No. It's in. It's a new type of resurfacing. It's not, they had one uh, micro seal that they used that they weren't happy with, but there's another one he was talking to me about. It. I don't have a lot of details on it, but he was saying they. Is that, it's not when they grind it and actually re put it back down, is that? No. It's not I think a, this is just milling. a. Yeah. I don't, no, they're not milling. I no, think. I mean, they've, they've actually have a process where they grill, grind it up, heat it, and replace it. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's that. I have no idea. Maybe we can find out. Yep, yeah, I can ask them. Uh, nothing on building and land acquisition. Butterfield Library? There's nothing on Butterfield. <coughs> nothing on Excuse Butterfield, me. okay. And there was a conflict of meetings for Barbara, so she couldn't make it tonight. Moving right along? <laughs> I got this. Okay. Sure. Um, I'd like to welcome Judy Farrell, a Cold Spring resident. She's co-chair of the Westchester Putnam Access to Healthcare Coalition. 
which provides information and education to the community about access to health care, which is a great thing. Um, Linda Brady also is a, is a member of the coalition. She's the program manager for the Navigator program at Maternal Infant Services Network, the Mid-Hudson's prenatal network since 1990. Wow. Lynn oversees the Navigator program for our region, um, which enrolls residents in health insurance through the New York State Health Exchange. So they're here to give us some more information about this really important time um, for open enrollment. Thank you for coming. If I stand like right here. You know, we're, so you'll have to speak into the mic. Yeah, it, the mic isn't amplified, but it will go into the uh, TV. Uh, right. So we need you on film so the rest of the town can hear this. That's what's most important. Okay. May seem like there's not a lot of people here, but there's thousands watching. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Linda is the there person. Are. I'm a resident of Phillips Town in Cold Spring, but Linda is the person for our region who is enrolling people. She manages the navigators who enroll people in the health insurance program. Get it while you still can. And thank you. <laughs> yes. Thanks for well, actually, yes, that's exactly part of why I'm here. Um, the Affordable Care Act opened New York State last October. It was a law in 2010, and it opened October 1st, 2013, same day the federal government shut down. The Affordable Care Act opened. Um, New York designed its own marketplace. Our marketplace <coughs> is called the New York State of Health. We are a premier program for the country. New York managed to enroll 960,000 people in six months into the Affordable Care Act. Of those 960,000 people, 4,443 came from Putnam, and of that 4,443, 585 residents in the Garrison and Cold Spring zip codes <coughs> were enrolled. On the grand scheme of things, I firmly believe there's more people on this side of Putnam County that need health insurance than those 585 people that got it. Open enrollment begins again next Saturday, November 15th. It's only going to be open for three months. It will close on February 15th unless the powers that be in Washington extend it. For right now, if you don't enroll between November 15th and February 15th, you will not have access to health insurance for 2015. It's really, really important. We do not have a space on this side of the county. We only enroll in Putnam County in Brewster and Mayapack. We feel that this side of the county has been underserved in that respect. In, and what, in oh so many ways. <laughs> <laughs> but what we're actually, what, we're, what I'm here to do is to say we love to come and try and set up an enrollment drive. On a Saturday, our navigators are all bilingual <coughs> Spanish speakers. Um, we are a not-for-profit, so paying for space is really not in our line budget. But we'd love to be able to come to this side of the county set up a date on a Saturday, maybe a couple of Saturdays between November and February, promote the enrollment drive to help the people on this side of the county get enrolled in health insurance. We've got the space. We'd love to have you. Then that will be, um, that would be awesome. We would also maybe like to, if we thought that there was more of an appeal, maybe try to come to this side of the county twice a month, maybe two Tuesdays a month in a specific spot where then the town people would know, oh, wait, I, I need health insurance. I can go to, let's just say, Village Hall, for, for lack of a better example. Somebody's going to be there. They can help me and set it up on a consistent basis so people would know. And then after open enrollment closes, you're not shut out of health insurance for forever. You can have a life event, and there's other qualifying events. But the big push right now is for everyone who thought maybe this was not going to work, and then if they get that little tax penalty in April, now's the time to avoid getting a tax penalty for 2015 if you get one for 2014. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. Um, yeah. The open enrollment is from November till uh, February. Yes. I mean, how does it, so obviously it starts into the new year. So if I sign up um, in February, is when I sign up, does it become effective that day? Becomes effective more, it would become effective March 1st. March 1st. Yeah. So if you sign up, anyone who signs up from November 15th through December 15th okay. is a January start. Oh, okay. 
If you sign up from December 15th to January, then it becomes a February start, and then it moves the next month, okay. Um, okay. which is why they sort of put it, if you were enrolled, your insurance is going to end. If you enrolled during the first enrollment period, your insurance ends December 31st, you have to renew which is not as complicated as it sounds. Um, you call back the navigator who helped you. You click a couple of buttons. If your income and everything agrees, you have health insurance for another year. It's not as complicated as actually doing the enrollment for the first time. Okay, so I, so I sign up and I perform that and I, it, it goes through. Yep. I'm covered right then, that right. day? Well, you, you have to pay your bill. If you have a yeah. premium, you don't get covered until you pay your bill. Right. But then if you... You would leave a meeting with a navigator. If okay. you sat with me, right. I would be able to tell you at the end of our hour and 15 minutes, you're eligible for this, your wife is eligible for this, you have a tax credit of this from the federal government that's going to help you pay. Mm -hmm. Let's sit down, here's 10 health plans to choose from, let's look at your medications, let's look at your doctors, narrow down your health plans, and by the time you leave, you will know exactly what you have. It's all done in real time. It's all done on a computer. What'll happen is your information gets submitted to your health plan, they send you a bill, you pay your bill, you've got insurance. If you're Medicaid eligible, your Medicaid retros back to the first day of the month that we did the application. So if we met today and you were Medicaid, your insurance would start November 1. It doesn't, it's not prospective, it goes retro. Hmm. What sort of things would a person bring with them to you know, meet with the navigator? It's pretty much supposed to be a paperless application. We do request um, that people, if they do have driver's license, bring their photo ID because every now and then, somebody's information doesn't match the new york's marketplace pings against the federal data hub so it's going to ping against homeland security it pings against social security irs department of labor department of corrections um and it asks all these kinds of questions so sometimes if somebody has changed their name but it hasn't been you know they haven't changed their social their name with social security you have to upload information we ask them to bring their 2013 federal tax return if they file tax returns. If their income is different, we ask them to bring their last four weeks of pay, stub, of pay stubs. That's pretty much it. No if you're trying to apply for all of your children, we definitely suggest you bring your tax return because you may not know all of your kids' social security numbers. And if you put in a social security number wrong, the system, you have to go in and have it overridden by um, somebody higher than me. So, but really, it, it's supposed to be paperless. It is, it is, the person's attestation. But if your tax return says, and you conveniently forgotten your tax return, and you say you're t you make $10,000 a year, but your tax return says, oh, I don't know, your 2013 tax return said $40,000 a year, it's going to ask for additional information as to why those data matches don't agree. But other than that, it's, it's supposed to be paperless. So the navigation, uh, I mean, the, uh, the enrollment is basically a one-on-one -on -one yep. helping navigate people through one the on system. One-on-one. Okay. One-on-one. And on are there requirements uh, as far as how much you make or whatever, or are there any limits to no. what the people it should be? Um, it, well, you can enroll in Medicaid, and when we used to do it on paper, we've only been doing it electronically for a year. If you filled out a paper application, we knew how much you, need, you could make a month and what program you were eligible for. Everything is calculated annually. You put your income in, the system literally spits out what you're eligible for. You could be eligible for a tax credit. You could be not only eligible for a tax credit, you could be eligible for a cost sharing reduction. Um, it's a pretty neat little system the way it runs and every person who needs insurance gets their own um, answer as to what they qualify for. And then are there choices of insurances or companies that you can sign on with or how does that work or where does the direction go from there? Or There are for 2015 there are 19 health plans that have agreed to participate in the marketplace not all 19 are in every county so what health plans participate in your county it's zip code driven so if we put in 10516 it's going to pull up all of the health plans that participate in the new york state marketplace in the 10516 area and then we sort of you know we try to pre-screen people i mean we've gotten much better at it we've got a year under our belt when you come, bring your doctor's names. Bring your list of prescriptions. If you can't write them all, take pictures of your, your prescription bottles. So we can kind of look and see which health plan has your form, has the better formulary for you. We've asked, um, and again, now that we're a year in, it's a little bit easier. We've asked people before they come, call your provider if you have a doctor. Ask them if they participate in the New York State of Health. Ask them which health plans they take. When you're presented with 15 or 20 health plans, 
it's a little overwhelming, but that's what the navigator's job does. It's either me or I have seven staff in the five counties that we serve. We take the time and sit down and kind of drill it down. We'll print out as many plans as you want so you can take it home and review it and call us the next day. If you're not sure, we're not going to sit there and force you to click that health plan until you know what you want. Because what's the point of having health insurance if you can't use it? So if we if we did set up something, which I think we should uh, mm -hmm. to have you here, uh, how would you would it be by appointments or how does that work? Generally on an enrollment drive, what we would do is we would promote it. We would like design a flyer. Um, we'd probably take an ad out in whatever the local paper is. We do have program money for that. We would say, please call for an appointment. But generally what happens is two people would be the navigator and the third person, which is probably me because I'm grandfathered in because I'm not bilingual, would sit there and make appointments for people. If somebody walked in or answer questions, we would always then schedule them another appointment. So we can work either way. We can just have two people here and whoever comes in, they bring their documents, they sit down with the navigator. And how long is that process like? It takes about an hour, anywhere from an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. It does depend on whether the marketplace is having a good day uh -huh. and we can't control that. <laughs> oh, that's terrific. Are you looking for just one date? Would you like a couple? Um, a couple, a couple of Saturdays yeah. would be good. Um, also, we would, I can certainly, like I'm speaking here now, we could set up an information center, a community information center that we could promote. And I can, again, talk to a larger crowd, a nighttime presentation, answer more questions. So we can set up a couple of dates. My business cards are there. There's two flyer. There's two flyers. One set is English, one set is Spanish. And then there's the statistics for the county. Because um, I didn't know people sometimes are very interested in numbers. Um, so if anybody wants to email me, I'm going to be out of the office until Wednesday. This is my last thing before going to see the grandkids. Um, I will gladly, I'll be back in the office on Wednesday, and we can certainly talk dates. So if you want to email between now and then, possible dates, I'll look at the schedule. Like I said, I have seven staff. I can free up two people on a Saturday Great. pretty much without any, any difficulty. All right, so I guess we'll take the flyer and put it up on the TV. Website. Yeah, put it on the website and so we can get the word out. And then maybe you could supply us with some dates that you're available to come sure. here. And then we'll just, you know, that was the way it would work best because we're okay. av we're available all the time. Okay. We could probably utilize some of the firehouses also so you can get right. in 88. So who would be my contact person to email? I could do this. You? Okay. I will email Nancy. Okay. Excellent. Maybe put um, February 7th at the tail end of this on your radar because it's when we're having big gatherings, that would be a good time to do it. And that's okay. our winter carnival. We can ask Amber if we can yeah. house you inside our recreation Absolutely. department. I will put that, I will write that on my notes now. I'll put February 7th down. Where's it's the definitely one of the dates. Where's the market housed this year? Where? Uh, St. Mary's oh. Episcopal Church Parish House. So that could possibly. Excellent. A wealth of ideas. Yeah, we've got lots. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming in. That's great. Yeah. Do you have a question? Oh. Sure. I just was curious what you meant by the marketplace not having a good day. I was, I well, sometimes when the computer system goes oh. down, we have we we can't control the computer system. Oh, okay. It shut down on Tuesday because the feds were touching their site. Judy, thank you for bringing this to us. Okay, the next item on the agenda is a resolution authorizing the release of escrow funds to RDR Equities LLC and Horton Road LLC, also known as Hudson Highlands Reserve. We have a letter from the Planning Board dated October 29th. Dear Supervisor Shea, at the October 16th, 2014 Town Planning Board meeting, it was determined that the applications of RD are Equities LLC and Horton Road LLC, Hudson Highlands Reserve, have been completed in that, with the conditions set forth below, any escrow funds for processing and consulting fees being held by the town should be released back to the applicants at the time. RDR Equities LLC, the Planning Board's Council, is owed payment on the attached invoice, which was submitted to the Town Board earlier this month with a voucher. Once that said invoice has been paid, the remainder of the escrow funds can be released back to the applicant. And with regard to Horton Road LLC, the application in question is one dated December 16, 
2013, not the new application dated September 29, 2014. Any remaining escrows funds of, on the old applications can be released back to the applicant, but the escrow on the new application should be retained by the town because the new application is still, still being processed. All right. Signed, Anthony Moranti, Chairman, obviously reviewed by the attorneys. Uh, can I get a motion on the resolution? So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, the next item is a resolution referring a proposed local law to amend Chapter 175, Section 175-10, Allowable Uses, Section 175-30, Sub Supplementary Dimensional Regulation, I love this, and Section 17560, Purpose and Applicability, in regard to the wind energy cons conversion systems to the Putnam County Division of Planning and the Putnam County and the Phillipstown Planning Board. And this is a roll call vote. Okay, this is um, an effort to try to clarify the town's position on wind conversion si systems. Um, and this has been spearheaded by Councilman Leonard. So, Mike, do you have anything you want to add to it? No, this is obviously, as you said, an ongoing process. Um, we obviously had the workshops, had the discussions. Um, we obviously, uh, as this letter states here, we obviously worked uh, with our attorneys, um, proposed language, um, suggestions based on the workshops we had and the input from everyone. Um, and that language is a, a sections of changes recommended are in here. Um, I've reviewed this and I find this to be acceptable. I think there was only one typo that uh, said six, but it should also have said feet. But, you know, other than that, I think uh, that was on page, oh, there's no pages. <laughs> um, that's, that would be the second page of the local law amendment. Uh, that would be item six, uh, section six, excuse me, item G. And that should just say a locking protective fence at least six it's gotten probably six, but it should say feet in height. Um, these are obviously uh, a couple of the items we felt uh, based on minimum acreage, how many you can have per lot, um, obviously viewing uh, restrictions, lighting, uh, ladders to maintain or maintenance capability, uh, setbacks, and also fencing uh, for safety reasons. All right. And of course, this would be for referred to both the County planning and our Phillipstown planning for review. As Comment. is every proposed law in town. Yeah. Mike, thanks for your work on this. So, um, any motion on the resolution referring this to Putnam County Planning and the local Phillipstown Planning Board? So moved. Roll call vote. Councilman Leonard? Aye. Councilman Randy? Aye. Councilman Montgomery? Aye. Councilman Van Tassel? Aye. And I vote aye. Oh, do it again. I will. I will second that motion. Thank you. Post. Yeah. Po post roll call vote. Do over. No, no do over. We're good. Okay. The next item is a resolution approving purchase of a greater and installment lease financing for the highway department. And this is also a roll call vote. This is something we had already done, but the. Apparently the form that we did it in was not correct. So, do we need to rescind the for the former resolution? You can rescind. I think that that it would be better if we did that, so it's on record. Right. And just rescind the last one. Of, it was um, October second, I believe we did that. So, can I get a motion rescinding the former resolution for the purchase of a greater passed on October second, two thousand fourteen? Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. I vote aye. Now, if I can get a motion on a resolution approving the purchase of a greater and installment lease financing for the highway department. So moved. Second? Second. Roll call vote. Councilman Van Tassel. I vote aye. Councilman Montgomery. Aye. Councilman Mirandi. Aye. Councilman Leonard. Aye. And I vote aye. It's always better the second time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next is a resolution accepting the resignation of Margaret Parr, account clerk for the Recre Recreation Department, effective November 14, 2014. Um, 
The letter reads, Dear Richard, this letter is to officially inform you that I am resigning from my position of account clerk for the Recreation Department of the Town of Phillipstown, effective November 14, 2014. I have enjoyed many years of service to the town and will continue to be involved in this great community. I have advised Amber that I would be happy to help in any way I can during this transition period. Best regards, Margaret Parr. Well, it will be with reluctance that we accept this resignation, but we wish Margaret well in her new position. Does anyone know what it is? Or? Um, she was hired by a school oh. um, to work at a school. So Terrific. So. Yep. Well, congratulations, Margaret. <clears throat> wish you the best. Um, I guess we'll be advertising for a position. At some point, we will not be filling this position before the end of the year, so that'll stay vacant until 2015. Uh, can I get a motion on the resolution accepting the resignation of Margaret Parr? Make the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye vote aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thanks again, Margaret. Thank you, Margaret. Thanks, Margaret. The next item is a resolution authorizing Supervisor Shea to sign the confirmation letter for the outreach worker for senior resources for fiscal year 2015. Normally we have a contract. They've simplified it and just want you to sign the confirmation letter. So this is early, though. It's yeah. It's funny. Usually we'll get this in the reorg. Right? More, no, we, or at the year end, year end, we try to get all the contracts done. But right. Huh. I mean, we're going to do it anyway. And it's right. Just, it's no increase, right? No, it's the same as it right. was. So, you know, it's just one thing to get out of the way. I, I don't have an issue with it. It doesn't really even say for the 2015 calendar year. Please sign the original. Says to get it in by November 1st. Well, there's a phone number you can call and ask a question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's right on there. I'm going to assume it's for 2015. Yeah. It is. Well, the resolution says 2015. Okay. Or resolve. The fiscal yeah. year for 2000. Fiscal year 2000. So this really does. So so I, I think so. we're good. If anybody wants to. Yeah, yeah. no. We're, we could belabor this a little bit and hang out. Okay. All right. Do you want to talk? That's fine. <laughs> fine. I don't like their logo. <laughs> I don't All right. Could I get a motion authorizing Supervisor Shea, that's me, to sign the confirmation letter for the outreach worker for senior services for the fiscal year 2015? Yeah. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Any opposed? A motion carries unanimously. What does that mean? The outreach work or no, this? this what is that's it? a bunch Happy of people, people springing up out of the ground. Yeah. 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 Out of the ground. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next item is a resolution authorizing Town Clerk Miranda to re advertise for bidders for the sale of the VFW 34 Kemble Avenue, Cold Spring, New York. As you're aware, there were no bids submitted on the 29th. Saw that earlier. Yeah. It's a little disappointing. Um, just for a discussion, do we want to advertise it with no, you know, no lower limit? I'm not saying no lower limit, but no, we did have a, a starting bid on there. Are we allowed to have a reserve? We can. In other words, yeah, so in other words, you, we can't. We'll have a reserve, which means we won't accept anything right, that's lower than that. $100. Yeah, well, we obviously have, anything. We, are right. yeah. we don't have to accept the bids, right. yeah. but I think that yeah. that may have been the reason we didn't receive any right. bids. Right. So I know there was a couple of appraisals done, so there were and what was and question seventy five was what we got. What was two eighty five. Two eighty five. That's what we went in for. So there is we could someone, go in. There is someone that has called, wanted to know about this being put out to bid, mm -hmm. and that. Well, can I make an offer before that? I just got that phone call this afternoon. Huh. So maybe we just send the same same spec out again, and you know it, it will delay, but it could result in. Yeah, we don't. We didn't feel that, that. Obviously, it wasn't informative enough, or we had any, anybody had any problems. Obviously, no. bidding back. So. No, yeah. not at all. Yeah. And also, I think it's a fair fair ask. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, you know. I would agree. 
I mean, you try buying a building I in, in Cold Spring. It. We could yeah. send it to, I know the Putnam EDC often will use their resources to get the word out that it's up for bid. Right. Yeah, so we can good. send it yeah. to them and maybe do a little. It is residential, though. Well, but there's provisions in that residential for. Right. I'm sure it could be adapted to. Right. For adaptive, adaptive right. reuse. Right. There is. So even in that section. So we'll just re advertise with I'll the same same conditions. Yeah. All right. All right. So we'll get a motion on the resolution authorizing the town clerk to re advertise. So moved. So moved. I'll take that as a second. Second. <laughs> second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I vote aye. Okay, the next item is a resolution hiring Lillian Mosier as a part time school crossing guard for the Garrison Union Free School. I guess uh, Garrison reached out to people and they are comfortable hiring Lillian Mosier, so so am I. So if I get a motion on the resolution? So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next item is a resolution hiring Kathleen DeBart as a part-time school crossing guard for the Garrison Union Free School. How many crossing guards do they need? <laughs> they're both taking turns. Oh, I know. <laughs> and a red They're doing it. They're, 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 they're going to be there both at the same time. We're working for free one. Yeah. <laughs> or one of for free, exactly. Yeah. Uh, same story with this. Can I get a motion on a resolution hiring, hiring Kathleen DeBart? So moved. So. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Any opposed? We did find Congratulations. a Butterfield report. If you'd like me to read it. Sure, we can do that. You let me know. Yeah. Okay, the next item is the code enforcement monthly report. Uh, fees collected, 33,862. Total of number of permits issued, 37. Two new one or two family dwellings. 14 additions, alterations, or repairs to residential buildings, 21 all other permits, pools, decks, sheds, plumbing, HVAC, et cetera, and 41 COs issued. All right. Thanks to Kevin Donahue, Code Enforcement Officer, and Bob Emmerich for all their work. Do you want to read the library? The library report has surfaced. We found it. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, the highlights for this month at the library. The library board is focusing on improving the safety and security of the library after several theft break-ins, attempts, and similar incidents. The They've installed a new fire alarm with horns flashers on both levels of the library. Future upgrades to security will include increased cameras, indoor and outdoor, staff emergency training, and various other measures. The library hosted 29 events during the month of September and 36 events in October. Thanks to funding from the Dyson Foundation, the library now offers museum passes to the FDR Library and the museum in Hyde Park. For more information, visit ButterfieldLibrary.org. On Saturday, November 15th from 5 to 7.30 p.m., the Friends of the Butterfield Library will host the 18th Annual Autumn Reception. This year, the theme of the event is Truman Capote's Breakfast at Tiffany's. This fundraiser directly supports services like the silent movie series and museum passes. For more information, visit the library's website. The library has opened a marker space in the children's room of the library. This is a space where patrons can create and let their imaginations run wild. A donation of a 3D printer will arrive soon. There has been an they have been awarded a construction grant through the New York State. The funds will be used to renovate the children's room of the library. No public money will be used for this project. The project is set to begin in the spring of 2015. It's a grant, so it is public money. But the computer, <laughs> computer help is offered on an on-demand basis. Please contact the library to arrange your session. The library offers home delivery to patrons that cannot visit the library. Please contact the library to sign up for this service. Wow. That's great. You have a 3D player with all those break-ins. Maybe they can print some guns up and then arm themselves. Something like that. <laughs> all right. Uh, Meetings and workshops, we have something scheduled for next Thursday. We'll be meeting with both ambulance corps. And Tuesday as well. What was, we 
schedule something for Tuesday. And Tuesday. No, you and I are Monday. Monday. Yes. Okay. Monday at 7. Yes. So next Thursday at 7.30. 13th. Well, we're not doing anything Tuesday. We're doing Monday and Thursday already. Right. I'm, I'm good. Tuesday is a holiday. Tuesday is a holiday, yeah. So we definitely yeah. did not schedule Monday. We're not Monday. doing Wednesday? Nothing on Wednesday. Well, the ambulance course couldn't yeah. make it on Wednesday. All oh, right. So. So we're at 7.30? 7.30 on Thursday. Wednesday. I'll get text. Thanks. And hopefully we're going to wrap things up with the budget next week and just be moving on to adoption the following week. Um, Kevin Donnie wants to get together before then. But... Monday, Wednesday, Thursday? Same as this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could do Wednesday. Or we could do Thursday. So we're going to be here bring anyway. Earlier. Yeah, we yeah. could bring him in earlier if you want to start yeah. at 7. Okay. So let's start at 7 on Thursday and skip doing it two nights in a row. Good. I'll let him know. Yes, please. The 13th. Or not. Let me get lucky. <laughs> Well, that's, that is a common occurrence because we all assume, like, all assume somebody's doing it and we'll show up and yeah, maybe we can get out early. <laughs> um, the other thing was that uh, Steve Burke had called. And, uh, can everybody just review the solar proposals for REC so we can potentially yeah. give it a thumbs up or thumbs down? And if you have interest in it, picking the... Uh, the proposal that you would most, you know, be in favor of. It's, it just has to do with time span. What was the, uh, was the, the attorneys had a problem with? What part of it? It actually, you know, I sat down with Jim Loeb and he was going through some things. There was no major concerns and then we wound up working out some. Uh, there was one minor thing. Yeah, it was one minor thing. I can't remember what it was. It was about but, ownership, wasn't there? An ownership issue. With well, pay. it was about their right to come in and remove the panels at any time. Right, right. So we couldn't have that. Once the you know, installation goes in, it stays in until. And the other part of it is, I mean, I, he didn't mention anything, else, but when the panels are through with their lifespan, they, the agreement is that they'll come back in and remove them. Mm. And so I guess the feeling would be they'd be replacing them at that point. But just give some thought to that because the incentives are dropping and then the program might disappear. Okay. So if we're going to do it, you know, now would be the time to do it. Anything else from the board? I got a call from a senior tonight. Um, something came up at their monthly meeting today. A senior resident let them know that they that she had gotten a call from someone that was very alarmed by it. They had claimed that she hadn't paid her taxes. They were coming to take her house and her passport. I think this has happened before. So um, if it does happen, please call the sheriff. Uh, if somehow they have access to senior phone numbers and they're preying on seniors. So, of course, you know, this uh, senior citizen doesn't have caller ID and, you know, couldn't track the number. But, uh, you know, it's like those letters that come out, too. So, just wanted so everybody just to. It's a scare they're not asking for anything? They're, I think they're asking for some kind of payment. Yeah. On the taxes. Right. Yeah. Wasn't you, Tino? No. Just, just <laughs> the the tax, only tax collection. January. Yeah. <laughs> the real thing is coming. <laughs> yeah. do, do not be confused by imitations. That's that's uh, awful. Yeah, it is. they it's were despicable. pretty upset. So oh, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, reach out. This terrible. I heard from a friend of hers. I'll reach out to her tomorrow to get more details. I just heard it right before the meeting. Oh, oh that person burns in hell. Oh, yeah. let's move on. <laughs> Scheduling. No, we're done. Anything else? No. Uh, Thanks to Phillips Town Tree for uh, responding to two emergency tree issues at the Keel Cemetery and Cedar Cemetery, which was quite urgent because um, it was really a safety issue with the right. kids there. And uh, we've also began uh, some upgrades at the um, Cold Spring Cemetery by clearing out all the brush away from graves, uh, graves that have been <coughs> covered by that. So now they're, they're visible. So we'll be doing some additional things along those lines as well. Right, we're also going to increase the budget for cemeteries in 2015. Yeah, that's terrific. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So, 
Just one more note. It's a really exciting time at Haldane right now. The cross country team is on its way up to states. The boys soccer team, uh, the girls soccer team will be on their way to state finals. The girls volleyball team is on their way Saturday to Long Island to play their regional championship. Once again, this tiny town has this great, great school with uh, winning teams. Well, I have That's to right. plug the Pop Warner then, too. Pop, uh, yeah. Pee Wee Pop Warner, the oldest group, will be playing for the Mid-Hudson Conference Championship. Um, not this Sunday, the following Sunday. So. Wow. Well, my son Nolan is on that cross-country team, and he's on that bus right now, and he's yeah, been on it for six and a half hours. <laughs> so, so we have I'll more time. I'll bet he's not too happy. <laughs> But uh, he was very excited, and they had a nice send-off over there today. It's, so it's really great. nice that the the uh, booster club funds the whole trip, and they got them, you know, new uniforms. They looked sharp, and the kids were. Uh, it, was, it was sweet, you know. They look, you know, they're very proud of themselves and the uniforms and all that. So it was really nice. Yeah, if you can get out to support the teams, uh, like I said, the volleyball is playing Saturday on Long Island. I think the girls' soccer is the 15th up at Cortland High School in Cortland, New York. It's kind of a drive, but it's well worth it. And, and the cross country is up on the Canadian border. So if you'd <laughs> like to take a nice trip up there in the next two days, it's the, race, worth it. the race will be run in the snow. Yeah. My son's on a team, and I'm not going. Okay. <laughs> I'm slightly, I'm here. Uh, it's in, what is the name of the town? I can't remember the name of the town. It's some tiny town up on the Canadian border, though. Oh, my gosh. It's, uh, it's quite a drive. But there, will, there will be people going from town. I'm just slightly busy with the move and all that. <laughs> so. And budgeting. And budgeting, yes. Yeah. Anything from the audience? Yes. Uh, I just, I, there are a couple of things. First, I was just curious. Earlier you said about the uh, hor um, a service road on off of East Mountain Road North for that, is that what you said? Yes. Off I, of that, it's in the plan. What? It, I'm not sure exactly where it is, I see it, um, but I think it's lower, low, well, lower East Mountain Road on the north side. So I think it's uh, Joe Fersenda's old driveway, maybe, or in that area. If hmm. you know, are you familiar with that, where he is? Uh, I, I don't remember. If you just come off, of, if you go off of nine, it's probably like a hundred, a couple hundred yards at the most uh, on the right. Hmm. I just just seemed like I'd heard. I thought there was some conversation earlier that there weren't the the only entrance. There was not going to be an entrance. I thought I was at a meeting where they talked about this and said there would be no entrance off of route off of East Mountain East Mountain Road North. Am I remembering uh, that or, or not? I don't remember that. Okay. Uh, I, it's, from the sounds of it, they wanted to have one uh, access on either for a service road. They talked about putting maybe some kind of temporary, like a uh, lock gate or something on it when it was brought up. Kim, is that right? That's right. And there was discussion of having an exit onto Horton Road and an exit pretty much where you're saying. Yeah. Um, but the idea was, I, it's, not, it's under discussion. The idea might be that the, only the residents of the area would be allowed to use that. But that, that all has to be on that. If you want to know what's going on, you should come to the planning board. Meeting. Yeah, OK. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty vague right now. It's just the, the beginning stages, so it's all preliminary. But it'll definitely be a concern if they have exits off. Well, you said there were 28 homes. Yeah. And East Mountain Road there is pretty narrow. It yeah. just seems like an awful lot of right. especially since I thought I remembered hearing that there were, they were not planning to use East Mountain Road North. Right. Out of previous. I think the main entrance would be off nine, and that would be probably where the houses are going to be built would be easier from the okay. access from there. But more to, more, still more to come, right? What's that? More to come. Yes, yes, okay. definitely. Um, just real quick, at, at the last meeting. You've got to change the tape. Oh, the tape. Uh, okay. So the other thing was uh, at, at the last, when I was here at the last meeting, and, and you, you know, you voted on the, on the, on the paving of the road, mm -hmm. um, in in the paper, I happened to notice that it, it stated that uh, and that I had uh, said that it, you know I supported it, which I did, for the health, and then it said safety. Uh, I, I I don't really I don't this, the the road isn't to me the road isn't safer again because it's paved, and so that was that was to my and then I went back and and listened to the. Uh, 
to the tape, which was ex very exciting, of course, to, to do. And, <laughs> you had a lot uh, of free time <laughs> on your hands. <laughs> just to find out what I had said, to see right. it. And, right. I, and I hadn't used the word safety. Uh, and, and just to, just, that just, I just want to make that point. Well, and, go ahead. Yeah, we have that issue too sometimes. Yeah, with the I've, paper. Heard. <laughs> I've heard. I've heard the paper. Uh, which but, which but the, paper was it in? The, the, uh, we should clarify this. The, the uh, uh, Putnam, the, 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 what is it, the, the, the main paper. Because we do have one that's called the paper and one that's called the PCNR. So. Yeah, the PCNR. Okay, yeah, yeah. so that, that's fine. we have that issue often that, too. That's fine. Uh, but the other thing is, uh, with regard to that, uh, the when after they paved it my son actually met, pointed out to me at first hadn't noticed it but before we they paved it uh, we didn't have any road signs telling us how fast to go and now of course we do so the perception for me is that somebody believes that people would go faster they're, they're only 15 mile an hour so, uh, signs but we didn't have them before so I, the perception would be that somebody who, who decided the signs needed to be there would assume that people would be going faster and they needed to give them some uh, instruction on, on going a little slower. So just something, you know, a, a point to be made. My son actually uh, pointed it out to me, and I, I scratched my head and said, well, yeah, I, I hadn't even noticed them, but they're there. Um, I think they were just taking an opportunity to put signage in. Well, that's, uh, that's certainly fine. But, you know, we ha wherever the dirt roads are, you don't see signs slow down, you know, the 15-mile the around this. There's some plenty of real sharp turns, and we don't see 15-mile-an-hour signs. So just just, you know, making the point that, to me, anyway, the perception is that somebody believes that you're going to go faster. And quite frankly, I think you will. I wish, I wish people would go 15 past my house. <laughs> yes, you're probably right. <laughs> yes, down, down where you are. Right. Yeah. I got passed by Carlson's greenhouse the other day. Oh, I've had that happen. Yes, I had that happen. I, I told that. I, that person I actually didn't think they were doing anything wrong. <laughs> It's it's a dotted line there, right? You can. <laughs> there is no line. <laughs> I think there's a passing lane. I, I don't know. So that's. Uh, it was Weiss. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Weiss, I hope you're watching. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Anything else? You back in the corner. You want to say anything? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you might have no. something to say. You know, your constituents or your fans out there. <laughs> All right. Um, vacancies, recreation, one. Connaught Village Park District Advisory Committee, three. Connaught Village Water District Advisory Committee, three. We understand that those yeah. are going to get filled, though. Yeah, November 20th meeting, we should have some good results for that. Good. Yeah. It's been a long time. Yep. Approval of vouchers, general. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Any opposed? Highway. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. I vote aye. aye. Any opposed? Connor Village Park District. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Any opposed? Connor Village Water District. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. I vote aye. Any opposed? No. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Good. Done. How'd we do, Tina? Thank you. You did great. Thanks. <laughs>